everybody, welcome back. I think this is gonna be a really fun video today. Um, we have a friend who has a really cool old machine, I won't go into the machine, but uh, Tanya ran into him the other day and he knows we do machine work and he asked her if she could bring home this old pulley with a, a bad keyway and a piece of key stock and see if we could put a new keyway in this pulley for this new piece of key stock. It's pretty munched up in there. So anyways, I don't have a brooch uh, with a bushing. I don't have a key seater. I don't have a slaughter. I don't have a key cutter. Uh, but I have in the past cut little keyways in lathes. And uh, the way I would do that is um, just put a tool in there and run the hand wheel in and out and give a little feed on the cross light out every time and eventually you'd end up with a keyway. But I did a really small keyway in a really big lathe and I just don't think that's practical here. But um, I do have an idea. My thinking is I'm gonna put my tool in there, put my pulley in there. Now, we can't have the, the chuck doing stuff while we're doing this. It has to be immobilized. So my thinking is I'm gonna put C-clamps on the chip tray, front and back, put a ratchet strap around the, the chuck, uh, like all the way around and then down to the other uh, C-clamp to immobilize it. That should be fine. And then I'm going to get uh, this tool I have. Uh, I used to have a slaughter years and years ago and I have this tool still kicking around. It's gross. It's really gross. It's been, you know, it's been through a lot, I guess. <laughs> but I'm going to give it a lick off the face just to freshen it up. It's not in horrible shape, but can't hurt to have a fresh tool. And um, then I'm going to push it through with the tailstock. And I'm just going to let, yeah, I'm just going to let the carriage coast with the tool in it. And the tailstock can certainly handle thrust. The main spindle, the spindle uh, can handle thrust. And again, the carriage will just be going along for the ride. So I'm quite confident we'll be able to pull this off and uh, get our buddy out of trouble. So I already made a setup and uh, I'm just going to get this in here again. I didn't even hook up my dust collector. I'm just going to give this the smallest little lick and uh, and then we're good to go. Yeah, that's good. That was a little lick. It was a little lick, you're right. And get the light right. Mm. Yeah, hopefully it looks shiny on there. That's a little shiny. So having this old slaughter tool around, you know, saves me having to make something up. So that's nice. And um, it's already got all clearances every which way around it. It was made to go in a small bore in the first place. So, so that's nice as well. Also rotationally, the, the, the cutting bit itself that's you know it's welded on there rotationally that's true to the this piece of key stock that I built the whole thing out of so that's nice I get that for free I'm going to approximately make the new key you know somewhat opposite to the the old key I'm also going to do my cutting in line with uh, the support of this spoke and this jaw. I don't know if it's a big deal, but I'm going to do it that way anyways. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Do you want a penny? Yeah, I do want a penny. A penny for your thoughts? <laughs> no, for my clamp, <laughs> so I don't scratch my paint. <laughs> I'm not going to go crazy on this, I mean, but there's some decent support there. And as soon as I'm in a pass or two, it's going to want to stay where it is anyways, because it'd just be harder for it to not be where it belongs. 
Now I'm just going to uh, find my center height. So what I'm going to do is find the surface of my tailstock quill. And when I'm happy I have it, I'll lock that zero. Now I don't know it offhand, so I'm going to measure the diameter of this and now add half of that to this. And then that will get me exactly down to center. And then I'll have a zero where center is. And then I can use my height gauge to set this tool bit to exactly center. This has been sharpened a couple times, not just today, uh, since new. So it's no longer 3 16 which is what we're trying to do here. Uh, it's, it's about, I forget exactly, 5 7 thou less, something like that. So I'm going to start on center, sort of rough it out. Then I'll come up some from center, clean that side up, and then go down some from center and clean the other side up. And I'll just keep going like that until hopefully I get a really nice fit with this. So we'll see how that goes. That's a weird size. 1.574. All right, that's what it is. Okay, so that is exactly the center height of the machine. Now I have to measure the tool and uh, take half of that width off of, bring it up by that much, and then when I'm, my tool is perfectly at that height, I'll be good to go. That is where I want. top of this tooth to touch. So I'm just going to adjust this up until it does and at exactly zero. Then I'll know I'm centered and we can start doing this thing. I use my height gauge, um, my micrometer, to determine where the center of this tool is as compared to the center of this machine and I'm there. And from here, to finish the cut, I'll probably have to come up a wee bit and then down a wee bit. Those will sort of be finishing cuts afterwards. But for now, the first thing I'm going to do, like always, because I've done the math and I was pretty confident with it, but I'm going to run it in there and eyeball it. Just make sure it's not grossly out of center. What's your crazy idea? Well, I'm not going to do it, but I had the... Uh, no, I'm totally not going to do it. Here's the thing. This is sort of... Well, it's very different than a regular lathe, let's say, because it's a lathe mill drill. And I, what I can do is engage the mill spindle, which disengages the lathe spindle. Uh, and, of course, that's fixed. But I still have power feed. So my, my crazy thought was, well, I can just, I can just get this thing going. In theory, I could, I could drive my key cutting tool through the bore using the power feed, but I, I'm not going to do that. I don't recommend that anybody does that. I mean, it's certainly not meant to do that and if something were to shear deep inside of somewhere I mean it would just suck so I'm gonna stick with my original thought and just run it all through with the tailstock uh, I don't know if you can see over here but there's two yep. reasonably equal lines that is just a minimum skim that I just started to take and that confirms that we're on center height because if we weren't one side would be deeper than the other or one side may be not even touching um, just to see what, how much force we're talking about. Oh, I was able to take a little cut, so I'm going to set a zero there. And I don't know. I'm just going to give it a thou, see what happens. Oh, it went like nothing. Okay, get a little oil in there. And uh, maybe we can just do this with the hand wheel. That'd be cool. Take less time. Cuts like butter. Oh, it's cutting great. I'm not straining the machine at all. Oh, got a little tight there. Take a clean up pass. Cool. Yeah, this is working so well that we're gonna 
This isn't going to be bad at all. It's awkward. Getting that lefty workout, eh? It's, well, it is awkward. <laughs> the hand wheel is so small in diameter. I'm only, I don't know, two inches off center, like for leverage. It really isn't made for this, but I'm not hurting it any. So we're in depth here, and uh, as it, uh, that, was, that was right easy. I mean, I did the whole thing with the carriage hand wheel. Didn't hurt the machine any, didn't even you know scare it. I mean, there was nothing to that. But as expected, because there was some wear on this cutter, I am gonna have to uh, um, go up a little with it, take a skim cut, and then go down a little with it and take a skim cut to get it exactly the right dimension for this key stock. So I think, it's, seven and a half thou to go i'm just going to take go ahead and raise this up four thou and then uh, we'll take that off the one side and then we'll see from there all right what's that that's far okay so so this should go a whole lot faster and easier. I'm just taking a four thou deep skim off the one side, so I should be able to rattle through it pretty quick here. Well, we've taken the four thou off the one side and I was just checking and sure enough, it won't go. We need to take the four thou off the other side. So now I'm going to adjust this until I'm uh, at the minus four mark. Yep, you're good. Okay. On the money. Good? Well, it, I mean, it goes in. It's probably, I can't slide it in. I can get it in the whole way. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that last pass that I came in and I'm just going to go back out with it and just get another little scrape off there. Yeah, you know what? That, that, is, that is perfect. I could not be happier. That's done. Perfect. Done like dinner. So now we need to... Drill and tap a hole over it so we can, uh, he can drive a set screw down and stop his key from walking out of there. All right. And just like that, audio glitch. So what, what I was gonna tell you guys is that I did the layout uh, of the hole over the keyway just by eye. I center punched it by eye. I lined the drill up by eye. I lined the pulley up in the vise by eye. It's all just by eye. But it'll be fine. I will easily uh, be able to land this hole over the uh, keyway. Maybe not perfectly, but uh, most definitely the set screw will lock the key, uh, the key in place. I'm all lined up and this is a really small diameter hole, so I'm not even worried about clamping this thing down. I'm just going to hold it in place, find my center punch mark with my drill, and... Uh, just pound it on through, and uh, and then we'll get to tapping this thing. Cast iron can be very abrasive, but it's also it can be quite free machining. You don't get strings, and it, it doesn't burr up very much, and uh, it it kind of turns to powder when you machine it. It's quite forgiving, actually. So that's all done. I'm going to uh, get ready to tap it out now. The area here is very tight and I don't have uh, an appropriate extension. So unfortunately, um, 
I'm going to do this the uh, the old-fashioned hard way, and uh, this is going to take a while, but I'll tell you what, it's only going to take a while for me. Uh, I'll make it be quick for you guys, all right? The cast iron taps really nicely. There's actually not even a need to uh, to break the chip by reversing the tap. The, the material just turns to powder, so you can pretty much just crank your way all the way through, and... Uh, and it works quite well. Here's the finished tapped hole. Pretty sure I said something funny, but that's gone forever now. So, yeah. This is after deburring what little burrs there were. And uh, just checking the fit one final time. Making sure there was no interference and that everything would go together properly for my friend when he went to reassemble this machine and and I, I'm actually super happy with the way this worked out um, I believe it was a blessing that this was cast iron and not cast steel I think this would have been a lot more difficult uh, doing this keyway in a cast steel well that's it uh, for today's video everybody uh, thanks for watching you know we do enjoy making these videos but uh, if you guys weren't watching, we wouldn't do it. So thanks to you guys. Bye for now.